All right, so in the previous lecture, we really talked about this left side, talking about specific methods and specific sources and archives in terms of talking about music. This time, we're going to talk more about this right side, about why it matters to study music, as well as rethink the Gemini a little bit by focusing on the other three articles. So first of all, I'm going to talk really briefly about Oliver's Wong, Oliver Wong's uh, Rapping and Repping, the Asian MC. Since I left a really large project for you all on the discussion board, I won't give it so much of a close reading. But we can understand Wong's piece as both talking about, as he says on page 38, the politics of racial identity, but then we also see that there's a certain politics of racial difference happening, right? So if we're talking about the politics of racial identity, Wong's discussion is very much about how race works on this individualized level, the extent to which these different rappers accept and refuse a certain kind of Asian or Asian American identity. But if we're thinking about the politics of racial difference, which never emerges in Wong's piece very clearly, we're thinking about the cultural reading of bodies and how that begins to inflect what it means to be participating in this larger music industry. So for example, on page 49 of that article, there's the discussion of the rapper Nishi. There's a difference between talking about Asian Pacific American and Neos Latina Latino in terms of communities. And on the other hand, talking about Asian Pacific American and Neos Latina Latino in terms of marketability. So we see that the politics of racial identity and the politics of racial difference are two simultaneous discourses about community culture and how that gets picked up in mainstream culture. Right? So there's no problem with being, for example, a Latino rapper if you're doing this sort of community work that happens very locally or happens within particular kinds of subcultures. But it enters an entirely different discourse when that becomes like your marketable thing as you get signed by a label. So we think about these two different fields of music itself and how it participates in this pop culture industry. So the point is not to do away with racial identity because racial difference as a commodified thing still exists and just refusing identity doesn't transform the ways in which people make racial difference matter as a detrimental thing, right? We see in this discussion of rappers that even as they refuse being identified or pigeonholed as Asian or Asian American, that audiences still talk about them and producers still talk about them in terms of that racial difference. So instead what we can think of are these complicated negotiations between the identity and difference, between different institutions, publics, cultures, individuals, and large scale discourses. Or as uh, Perez Torres argues on page 224 of his article, by looking at how these individual uh, text objects and practices of music become related to these large real world things, we're then talking about, quote, viewing music as a semiotic system informed by racial discourse, which leads one into the treacherous terrain of identity and identification. So for Perez Torres' project, here we're starting to think outside of the very material histories that Avon Meyer and Vargas bring up. Instead, we're thinking about radical mestizaje. So mestizaje, as Perez Torres explains, is this uh, the, is a way of talking about real subjectless discourse in terms of U.S. Latina and Latino cultures, particularly with regards to the West Coast Chicana Chicano cultures. It's a way of thinking about hybridity and uh, complication and combination as a sort of radical politics in a world that's very much divided along hard stream lines. So two things to think about as you're going over the Perez Torres article. On page 220, there's the discussion about Rage Against the Machine, which is a 90s band, early 2000s band that hopefully some of you are familiar with. Otherwise, I've just gotten really old. So in this discussion about Rage Against the Machine, we can see that Rage Against the Machine is not necessarily involved with these micro-level community politics but they are involved with very large politics. Perhaps the era in which you came to know them was when they were really into uh, anti-corporatism anti and freedom to vet. We can understand these larger politics as part of a subjectless critique, 
it's not just about Chicanos and Latinos, but about the impact of power's manifestations on others, right? Because if we're talking about, for example, anti-corporatism, it's not just a particular Chicano or Latino thing, but we can see how all communities are impacted by the power of the few over the many. Then on page 214, Perez Torres does a close reading of Cypress Hill, which is also a group that you might be aware of. They were really big in the earlier 90s. So he refuses Cypress Hill as bringing forth a radical mestizaje, but he does recognize their identity. So we can understand radical mestizaje as something that does not belong to specific bodies, but to specific modes of critique. So even as Cypress Hill has a Latino member, we can think about it in terms of there are these certain politics that take place and the music industry that does not feature brown or yellow bodies, but on the larger level, Cypress Hill perhaps does not represent a progressive politics that would lead towards social justice. And their lyrics are kind of decadent, mm, but I mean, right? So these are two different macro level discourses that are being taken on. On the one hand, there is identity, but on the other hand, the subjectless critique doesn't quite exist, except if you're very much into the legalization of marijuana movement. And we can see how both Rage Against the Machine and Cypress Hill, as very mainstream groups, are not uh, on the level of community cultures. So we can see that in talking about cultures and publics, we're talking about something very much larger than individual communities. And in terms of institutions, we're then thinking about all the things that collect together in what we shorthand as the music industry, right? Individual labels, the media, celebrity culture, and how all of that shapes the ways in which race and racial difference works. So I make this list so that we don't reduce racial identity and racial difference to a single thing, but something that takes a different form throughout all these different levels of analysis. Right, and so, I'm just gonna make a another lecture for the next one. It'll be short, I swear. All right, I'll be back.